In this video, I show how to build a reinforced double-walled octahedron. This is a double-walled octahedron that has not been reinforced. In another video, I show how to, how to build this. This, one, this particular one has edge count of 13. And the particular flaw that I'd like to show how to overcome in this, in this video is the fact that the top and the bottom uh, layers are, I think you might be able to see that they're weak. So if I push down on the top, I can permanently depress this top, making it uh, concave. And uh, this, the side walls are nice and resilient. You push in on them, they snap right back into place, but the top and the bottom are weak. So the idea is that uh, we want to reinforce this shape in case you push in uh, the top or the bottom face uh, so that, the, so that it's, it, it keeps its symmetry. And to do that, we use the following table, and there's a copy of this table in the written description. What I'm going to do is to show how to do this for edge count 13. Um, I'm going to build three layers. Uh, the, the bottom layer, the layer 1, is 2 by 11. Layer 2 is 2 by 12. Layer 3 is 2 by 5. We'll need a column. I'll show how to build that. And this particular build requires 1,114. So depending on how many magnets you have, you can decide which size you want to try and build. One thing to note is that layer one and layer two are the same as they would have been for the regular double-walled octahedron. We just need this reinforcement layer three to help out and the column. And so this would have been the same as for a double-walled octahedron. So the layer one always starts off with a filled hexagon, and that's what we'll do to build this two by 11 layer. Layer two starts off with the three magnet triangle, and layer three, again, starts off with a filled hexagon. So let's try, um, and that's true all the way down the line here. Start with the filled hexagon, three magnet ring, and filled hexagon. All right, two by 11, two by 12, and two by five. Let's see if we can do this. There's a filled hexagon with three sides on it. Add two magnets to every other side, then add another ring. Let's see how close we are. Two by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. That's it. That's layer one, the bottom layer. We need a two by twelve. That starts off with a filled, uh, well, I'm sorry, with a three magnet triangle. All right, adding a ring to that. Then I add another ring. Each time we add a ring, we we hear we listen for a snap six times to make sure we put six six um, sides on that hexagon. All right, it still isn't two by twelve. See how close we are. Two by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Perfect. And then we also need a two by five. That's uh, layer three. Starts off the filled hexagon. Put another ring. Add two magnets to alternating sides, and there's a two by five. Happy day. So now to put this together, we're going to put the bottom layer together now by, here's layer one, here's layer two on top of it, and then layer three goes right smack dab in the middle, just like that. And if you can see, you might be able to see, here's the, 
Here's layer one, layer two, and layer three. And between the edge of layer three and layer two, there are one, two and a half magnets all the way around. One, two and a half, one, two and a half. So we know we're doing great there. So that's the bottom. We need to build the top. Okay, now we have the bottom and the top. Set the top aside and begin to add layers to the bottom. In the same way we did for the non-reinforced double-walled octahedron. So we add an outer, outer ring, just like that, and an inner ring. And then firm up the corners. We're gonna also need a ring around this top, the top structure, and it's gonna be wound the other way because the polarity is opposite. Firm up the corners. There's the top. We'll set it aside yet again. Not that we don't love it. And then we continue to build. Um, we're, we're now going to build the column that needs to go between the top and the bottom layers. And this number seven refers to the number of layers in the column. Let me show you how to build that now. Start with a three magnet triangle and wind a ring around it. That's what I call a three by two or two by three hexagon. That's my bottom layer. Build another one exactly like it. But then place it in such a way that the two magnets on this one overlap the three magnets on that one. Then just continue to build layers, putting them on uh, alternatingly like that until we have seven layers. Here's the column with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven layers in it. That column is going to go right smack dab in the middle of layer three here. So I'm just double checking to make sure that it's uh, the same distance from all, all sides. And sure enough, it is. Now, I'm in a position to go ahead and wind these rings around the bottom and then add the top, and we'll be done.
Okay, as you can see now, we've got, we've added layers and, until we've reached the top of the column. And so now all we have to do is add the top and we're almost done. So here's the top. I'm gonna match these up and then snap the top into place. And there you go. Uh, then add magnets to the corners or the vertices. Three on the top and one, two, three on the bottom. Now, in contrast with the, the double walled non reinforced, uh, this that had the, the weak top and bottom faces, this one is solid as a rock. In fact, you can push on that thing all you want. You might be able to stand on it. I don't know. But uh, it's really solid and it holds its shape uh, very, very nicely. So, again, if you're going to build it in other sizes, remember that layer one starts with a filled hexagon, layer two starts with a three ring uh, triangle, layer three starts with a filled hexagon, and the number of columns are these, these two by three um, stacked columns. This gives the number of those that you need. It's the total number of magnets in the edge count. Have a nice day.